The Gold Rush Game by William S. Fu. Eric Wong looked at his new game on the computer screen. Let's play. He clicked the button to start. The Gold Rush, his friend Matt O'Brien read out loud as he rolled his chair closer. What's that mean? I want to see it. Come on, I'm going first. I'm older, said Eric. Besides, it's my game. Be nice. Eric's mom came up behind them. We bought the game so Eric could learn more about the gold rush. She said to Matt, his dad and I are tracing our family tree. Eric's great-great-grandfather on his side, his dad's side, came to California from China during the gold rush, but we don't know much about him. Hey, look at the game, said Eric. On the screen, he saw steep mountain slopes covered with tall green trees. Some men wearing broad-brimmed hats rode horses along a muddy path, leading mules with bundles on their backs. Picks and shovels were tied to the bundles. Chinese men with long braided cues down their backs squatted by a rushing river. Who are those guys? Matt asked. Are they looking for gold? They might be, said Eric's dad as he came into the room. He held out a small piece of paper with two Chinese characters written on it. This is the name of our ancestor who first came to California. I don't know Chinese, but my grandfather wrote it down for me when I was growing up. Eric turned and looked. What was his name? Dido, his dad said. I'll say it slower. Dido. It means great path. That's a good name for a man who took a great adventure traveling across the Pacific Ocean to a new land. In Chinese, his family name would be given first. And so he was called Wang Dai Do. Wang Dai Do, Eric repeated. Yeah. Do you know how to write that? Matt asked, looking at the name. No, Eric shrugged. We'll let you play your game, said Eric's mom. Come on, dear. She and Eric's dad walked away. Look, Eric pointed at the screen. A miner wearing a broad-brimmed gray hat lifted a rock showing a button that said, press if you dare. I dare you, Matt said loudly. I'm doing it, annoyed. Eric pressed the button. Suddenly, Eric and Matt found themselves standing in a narrow space between two large, tall rocks by the muddy road in the mountains, with trees towering over their heads. Miners and prospectors walked and rode past. Eric's heart beat faster with excitement, but he was also a little scared. What happened? Matt asked. This is creepy. Where are we? Eric smelled the scent of pine trees and kicked at the mud. I think we're really in the gold rush. We went back in time. Did you say back in time? Matt stared around them in shock. Come on. Eric walked up to the mysterious miner who had lifted the rock. Do you know a man named Wong Dai Do? Eric carefully pronounced his ancestor's name, remembering to put his family name first. The miner laughed. Then he closely he looked closely at Eric and Matt. You're not from around here, are you? No, we're not, said Eric, hoping the man wouldn't ask any more questions. Do you know how many people are in this area? We're on the Feather River upstream from Marysville, in the western foothills of the Sierra Nevada in California. Men came to find gold. We're called the 49ers because so many of us have come this year. What year, Matt asked, his eyes wide. 1849, of course, said the miner. He frowned. Don't you boys know what year it is? Gold was discovered in this area last year. Now 49ers are coming all over America and lots of other places. How do they get here, Eric asked. I came overland from the eastern United States by wagon train. A good friend of mine took a ship from south from the east coast south around Cape Horn 
at the tip of South America. From China, other men, other men come on ships across the Pacific Ocean. But where do they live? Eric asked. I don't see any houses here. Marysville is a new town, said the miner. It was started by miners and prospectors. But men also live in camps, sometimes together and sometimes on their own, while they look for gold. He pointed to the river. But the best way to find a Chinese miner is to ask other Chinese miners. Matt ran down to the edge of the river where a Chinese miner squatted by the rushing water, swirling sand in a metal pan. Eric hurried after him. Hey, mister, is your name Wang Daido? No, the man shook his head. Then he gave Eric a little smile and pointed downstream. You see that man? His name is Wong. Matt ran down to the bank, but this time Eric ran too. They stopped next to Mr. Wong together near a big tree growing right beside the river. Are you named Wong Dai Do? Eric asked. Mr. Wong was a little younger than the other Chinese miner. His long braided queue swung behind him as he looked up. I am, he said, giving both boys a big smile. Why do you ask? Eric was afraid to explain he and Matt had traveled through time from the future. He was sure Mr. Wong wouldn't believe him and might chase them away, so he changed the subject. My name's Eric, and this is my friend Matt. Have you found any gold? Not today. Some days I find enough gold to buy food that will last until the next time I find gold. I filed this claim, so I have the right to pan gold here. The river washes gold dust downstream, so I catch river water, mud, and sand in this pan and try to find it. He moved the pan in a circular motion so that water sloshed out with some of the sand. Gold is heavy, so it stays in the pan. Wow, said Matt, and the river is so fast. Don't you have to get sand from the bottom of the river? Eric asked. It looks really deep right here. It's very deep here, said Mr. Wong. The riverbank drops steeply from the edge of the water and the currents very fast. But I can take the sand and mud right here at the edge and pan it. And the water itself carries sand even when it looks clear. On a good day, water brings gold to me. Suddenly, the ground shook. Eric and Matt thumped backward into a sitting position in the mud. Mr. Wong fell into the river with a splash. It's an earthquake, Eric jumped again. He had felt small earthquakes before, and this one was so quick it had ended already. When he looked up, he saw Mr. Wong in the river, desperately holding on to a tree root with both hands. The power of the river current pulled his legs downstream, and he struggled to hold his head above water. Help me. Eric and Matt grabbed his arms and pulled but the river current was too strong and Mr. Wong was too heavy for them to help. We have to save him, Eric called desperately to Matt. If we don't, my family won't ever be born and I won't be here. Eric saw a tree branch hanging low. Come on, help me pull the branch down. He took the branch in both hands and bent his knees so his weight pulled it down. When Matt grabbed it too, the branch lowered to Mr. Wong. With an outstretched hand, Mr. Wong grasped the branch. Matt, let go. Eric and Matt released the branch, and the branch slowly moved up to upward again, pulling Mr. Wong out of the water. He got his feet back on the riverbank and let go of the branch. Mr. Wong took several moments to catch his breath. His clothes were so wet they stuck to him. Aye, you two saved my life. Thank you. Mine too, said Eric. You're welcome. I thought I was going to drown. Everything I have dreamed of would have come to an end. He paused and looked down at the ground. I came from a poor peasant village in southern China, Mr. Wong went on. I hope to find some gold and send for a woman I love. We'll marry here and raise a family in America. At least I hope so. Hey, that's good, said Matt, because... Eric jabbed Matt with his elbow and interrupted, because it's a good idea. 
He smiled, knowing that Mr. Wong's dream was going to come true. I don't have much to offer in return for my life, said Mr. Wong. He reached into his pocket and pulled something out. This is my chop. Eric and Matt looked. It was a small piece of ivory with unfamiliar shapes called, carved at the bottom. What's it for? Eric asked. I'll show you. Mr. Wong pushed the bottom into a smooth spot of mud next to the river. When he lifted it, three marks were in the mud. That's my name, Wong Dai Do. I don't have any gold today, but I would like you to accept this as my gift. I will always remember you. Eric took, a chop, took the chop. That's very nice of you. Thanks. I should return to my camp and dry off, said Mr. Wong. I think we better go home too said Eric. We enjoyed meeting you. He carefully put the chop in his pants pocket. Thank you again for your help, said Mr. Wong. Goodbye. He picked up his pan and walked away from the river toward the muddy road. How do we get back to our time? asked Matt. Maybe we should try to find those big rocks, but where are they? Come on, Eric said to Matt. I remember where they are. Maybe we'll find some kind of clue there that will help us get back. He led Matt back into the space between the two big rocks where they had walked out. Suddenly, they were back in Eric's living room in front of the computer. Wow, it worked. Those rocks must be some kind of doorway into the past. Matt looked at the computer screen. That's a great game. Who's winning? Eric's mom asked as she and his dad came in. Mom, dad, Eric called out. We went into the game and back in time. Yeah, said Matt. We met Eric's great, great, great grandfather. Eric's mom and dad laughed. I love the way these games build imagination while they teach history, said Eric's mom. Isn't that nice? Dad, he told us he filed a claim for his mine along the Feather River. Well, I know from... What I read in my grandfather's journal that Dido did file, file a claim. Let's see if we can find out if it was along the Feather River. Eric's dad moved to the computer and conducted an internet research, internet search. After a while, he looked up in surprise. Wang Dido did file a claim in that area in 1849. I found a reference to it. Do you believe me now? Eric said. Come on, Eric. Do you expect me to believe you actually went back in time? No, I guess not. Eric felt a, rave, a wave of disappointment, then suddenly reached into his pocket. Maybe this will convince you. He pulled out the chop. Dad, look at the name, Wong Dai Do. Smiling, Eric held it up. On the chop, a little bit of gold dust from the river glinted in the light. <laughs>